Jesus with thanksgiving in your heart and give Him praise and give Him praise. Come into His presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Your voice is raised. Your voice is raised. Give glory. Good morning, Father. So we are into the lockdown 3.0. We continue. And I offer this Eucharist for all your intentions. But especially for all those who will be celebrating or who have celebrated their birthdays, anniversary, special occasions in this lockdown period very quietly and with only the family members. We ask for God's choice of blessings on you this special day. And so we sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves worthily then to celebrate this Eucharist. The three readings are all in the context of the Christian community. The Christian community is asked, motivated to keep alive the memory of Jesus who is the way, the truth and the life. Let us call to mind our unworthiness, seeking always God's healing touch. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I greatly sin in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Take away the sins of the world 
within us that those who are pleased to make new in your baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the twelve called the full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You, brothers, must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with the Spirit and with wisdom. We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the world. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Spirit. And together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicolaus of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased and a large number of priests made their submission to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word is Yes. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The Lord is the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God, and precious to Him. Set yourselves close to Him, so that you too, the holy priesthood that offers the spiritual sacrifice which Jesus Christ made acceptable to God, may be living stones, making a spiritual house. As scripture says, See how I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone that I have chosen, and the man who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are believers, it is precious. But for unbelievers, the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was the fate in store for them. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God, who call you out of the darkness, and into his wondrous light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in me. In my father's house there are many rooms. If there were not, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And when I have gone and prepared a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, you may be there too. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear people, there are certain slogans we have got used to because of our situation. For example, stay in lockdown or stay with safe distance. These phrases we have never heard, but we are hearing them now. So there are certain words and phrases connected to a situation. For example, to mobilize the people, Tilak said, Swaraj is my birthright. 
Mahatma Gandhi said, the father of the nation, Satyagraha is our way. John F. Kennedy told the Americans, ask not what the country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. 75 years ago, we had World War II, 75 years ago, and they say the present situation is worse than what the world went through 75 years ago. And at that World War II, Winston Churchill gave the world one phrase, victory at all costs. With that phrase, my dear people, he aroused the hearts of the people to remain undaunted, even though they were on the verge of destruction. With those words, victory at all costs, he encouraged the whole world not to lose faith, however fierce the battle be. My dear people, in today's three readings, we hear such hot, arousing speeches. In the first reading, the apostles motivated the early church with their speech, telling them to be loving, caring, and worshipping. In the second reading, Peter's speech advises the early church to keep alive the memory of Jesus. He uses a beautiful phrase, Jesus is the cornerstone. And in the gospel passage, it is a stormy speech Jesus gives. The scene is the Last Supper. It's the dark night. And Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. The apostles were all confused whom to follow. He said, I am the way. The apostles were all confused what to do. Jesus said, I am the truth. The apostles were all confused where to go. Jesus said, I am the light. My dear people, the words of Jesus, do not let your hearts be troubled. We are tempted to say, is Jesus realistic? How can he say, do not let your hearts be troubled? All of us know how our lives are troubled. International scene, our security is threatened by this pandemic. The national scene, our daily routine and peace is disrupted. In this city, our lives are jeopardized because of unemployment and the economy meltdown. We find troubles even in our personal lives. We have troubles with our work, with our family, with our children, with our parents, with our health. Further, we have imaginary troubles also. We imagine now failure, we imagine loss, we imagine rejection. And so, once again the question is asked, was Jesus realistic when he said, do not let your hearts be troubled? Did he face troubles? And the answer is yes. He faced troubles with the Pharisees who twisted his words. He faced troubles with the disciples who misunderstood him. He faced trouble with Judas who betrayed him. He faced troubles with Peter who denied him. He faced troubles with the vision of God and the vision of God is that he should die on the cross. 
So he did face troubles. And still he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. My dear people, there are four phrases in today's gospel passage. Let us try to understand it. What I've done is, this passage or this phrase from the scripture, I've combined it with a, the spirituality thinking, a little bit of psychology, common sense, and our wisdom from all the experiences. I've combined them to understand these phrases. The first phrase, do not let your hearts be troubled. Let me see how I can explain this. Very rarely we bring suffering and trouble directly onto ourselves. For example, a person drinks excessively and causes damage to himself. A person drives recklessly and then lands in the hospital. The cause of the trouble is there from the person and the person has to face it. But most often, most often, the troubles and sufferings just exist in the universe. It's not directly caused by us. The troubles and sufferings are there in the universe. It's very painful. We cannot change that. What we can change is how we respond to this painful suffering that exists in the universe. That will change everything. How you respond. We can either accept the situation and integrate it and therefore make our life meaningful. Or we can rebel against it, complain it, and make our life miserable. So the situation is painful. It is left to us how we make it a hurting experience or a manageable experience by the way we respond to it. I hope you have got that. And so, whether in failure or in retirement or whether there is a tragedy, the situation there is painful. You cannot change it. What you can change is your response, your reaction to accept it. And so life becomes worth living or rebel against it and life becomes a living hell. In this context, you need to understand the phrase do not let your hearts be troubled. The second phrase in today's gospel, Jesus says trust in God. Is this trust in God an escape from reality? I don't think so. Rather, Jesus invites us to a declaration that nothing can destroy us. Nothing can crush us. It's not a blind faith. God still has his hands on the steering wheel of the world. That means we can still bounce back to life. The trust in God is that we persevere when we cannot see the goal. The trust in God is we are patient when we do not see the end results. The trust in God is that we can make decisions when there are very little evidence. The trust in God is we continue praying when inwardly we may doubt. Is anyone listening? The third phrase, my dear people, in the gospel passage we have heard, in my father's house there are many mansions. See, Jesus presents us the bigger picture. Those in the corporate world will know this axiom they always have in the company. Look at the big picture. I think Jesus looks at the bigger picture. He's inviting us to see things 
as God would like us to see things. Clearer, sharper and brighter. And when we have seen things clearer, sharper and brighter with His grace, we are looking at the big picture. I'll give you an example. I was going for a blessing of the house which was on the 15th floor. The, the fast lift or the rapid lift was out of order and I had to go by that slow lift. There was a gentleman and there were children in that lift. And the gentleman complained, so slow it's going, so slow it's going. He got up on the 14th floor. I was going to the 15th floor and I asked those children, where are you going? They said, no uncle, we are going up and down, up and down and we are very happy that this is a slow lift because we are enjoying it. See, they looked at the picture differently whereas the other person grumbled. Another example, I was in charge of a big uh, organization that uh, needed to be done for the diocese. A big event and then the day before we had put the canopy that's the covering the mandap and it just collapsed my heart sank i was devastated next day is the function the contractor comes and tells me father tension kyu leta hai mai hona means he's there why do you get frightened that reminded me of a movie that was there, a Bollywood movie, Mai Huna. That means there's some situation which is troublesome, then the superhero comes and says, Mai Huna, and he solves all that problem. Remember the second reading? St. Peter tells us, Jesus is the cornerstone. He might be saying, Mai Huna. The third phrase from today's gospel passage, where I am, you may be there too. Jesus is inviting us to abide in, in the next uh, chapter following this, what we have read in today's gospel passage. A beautiful word is used, abide in me. Abide is a rich word. And therefore the question is, do we long to abide in the law? Where I am, you may be there too. Do we thirst to abide in the law? Do we desire to abide in the law? Once I was going by train during the May vacation and at a particular stop, it was very warm. A lady came selling water in those bottles. And she said, it's 15 rupees. I knew the MRP is 10 rupees. I said, 10 rupees me de tai. You know what she told me in Hindi? You're not thirsty. If you were thirsty, you would have taken the bottle for 15 rupees. You're not thirsty. And she walked away. Yes, that was clear. Do I really thirst to abide in the law? That is the question we need to ask. My dear people, in this connection, I also say that do we thirst to accept Jesus as the way, the truth and the life? Do we thirst to be attached to Him? Do we long for Him? He is the way, the truth and the life. And I want to conclude with this particular parable. Remember last Sunday, I said, we have a smart God, S-M-A-R-T, God who is sensitive, merciful, do you remember that? Approachable, which was the next one, R, Redeemer, and T, who is the transmitter of energy, a smart God. Now, a few of my friends who are more savvy than me in mobile technology, I asked, after we connect, which are the three main apps that you would like? Three. Only give three. They said GPS. Why? Because we want to know where we are going. It's important. Second, Google. Because we want to know 
what we are saying or what we are checking is true. And third, YouTube. Because life becomes very exciting when you see so many creative things on you. The way, GPS, the truth, Google, and life becomes enjoyable with the YouTube. Jesus says, I am the way. In life, my dear people, as we journey, as we travel through the dusty roads, to the highways, the narrow lanes, the smooth roads, the bumpy roads, He positions us and assures us He is the way. Jesus is the truth. In life, we are always confused. What is right? What is wrong? Jesus says, use me as the yardstick as the benchmark to know whether you are doing the right thing or the wrong thing. We have to choose between two things, sometimes between good and evil, between two evil, between two good. There is a mixture in us of fear, an attachment, detachment. Jesus says, choose through me. I am the truth. And the third one, Jesus is the life. Jesus makes life meaningful. We pass through troubled times, we have our health concerns, moral dilemma, we get agitated, we get troubled, we get disturbed, we grapple with unanswered questions. But Jesus says, I am the light. And I close with this particular line of the second reading. God says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart, God's own people who will come out of the darkness into His light. We are chosen to be with Jesus, the way, the truth and the life. Amen. We profess our faith. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The prayer of the faithful. Let us give praise to God our Father for having given us His Son, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. All together, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests and religious, that they may be committed servants of the Lord, helping build God's temple here on earth, which is the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For government leaders, that they take their responsibility seriously of dedicated service to societies and communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in the front line of offering care to those affected by this pandemic, that their effort be recognized and acknowledged. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may all follow Christ, the one and only, who can lead us to the Father and to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our personal and local needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. In a very special way, we pray for the migrants. Our heart 
is in pain seeing their situation. They just want to go home to abide with their families. Throwing all caution to the wind at times because they understand that they want to abide with their families, which we may not. We ask the Lord to be with them as they journey along this painful period of their life, deciding whether they need to go back, stay on, and still assuring them that they can be with their families. For this intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Amen. our prayer. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name for our good and good of all His holy church. Let us pray. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, you have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead. Grant we pray that as we have come to know you, we may make your home ours because you are the way, the truth, and the life. We make this prayer through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is right and just. Our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you. But in this time to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. He is the way, the truth and the life. And so with the saints and angels in heaven, we praise and glorify your name forever.
you are indeed holy o lord the font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall they become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion he took bread giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice once more giving thanks gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of our faith resurrection we offer you o lord the bread of life the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit lord remember your church spread throughout the world bring her to the fullness of charity with pope francis oswald our bishop all the priests religious and lay faithful we remember our near and dear ones our family members our close friends our people from the community who are no longer with us but have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection kindly remember all those who have died in the peace of christ Have mercy on us gathered here that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god saint joseph the apostles all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him with him in him in the unity of the holy spirit All glory and honor is yours almighty father forever and ever amen together let us say the beautiful prayer at the savior's command formed by divine teaching we all say our father what in heaven and what be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. At this moment, let us place all our despair, all the worries, the tensions, the anxieties. Things are. not predictable what's going to happen with regard to our children's education with regard to the church opening with regard to the economy of the nation with regard to our security with regard to getting a cure for this pandemic 
Lord, we place all these uncertainties with you. Deliver us, we pray, from all these uncertainties, the evil that surround us, and graciously grant peace in our days, the peace that only you can get, that we may always be free from the personal tensions, anxieties, worries of life. We await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the peace, our love, our support. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the mighty. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let's make the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament, I love you above all things. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. The hymn that will be played is to remind us that Jesus the way, the truth, and the life is with us.
We'll have the final prayer first. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, we pray. And lead those who have been given the heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to the newness of life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few things to mention. First and foremost, we pray for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine be to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear people, this is the month of May, wherein we bring alive a devotion to Mary, the Mother of God. As the hymn goes, lead us to your son Jesus, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And Mary is a model of how we can go to Jesus, the way, the truth, and life. And what did Mary do? She pondered. She accepted. She embraced. Let us keep that model even though things are not certain. We ponder, we accept, we embrace because He cares for us. I take this opportunity to thank all those who are behind the scenes for the live telecast and the streaming, those of the liturgical cell, those the office staff, those of the St. Anthony's communication cell and also Dattatre and the King and Queen cable service. To all of them, in spite of the risk that might be involved, they do come and do this so that the people may enjoy the telecast of the Mass. God bless you. I understand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. And may God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. We meet the next Sunday. Till then, keep smiling, keep safe. God bless you. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a dedicated people that should show for the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness into. Praises of you, for he has called you.